Students, okay, we are on day 16, so you're going to page 9, day 16. I'll show you my sketchbook here in a minute. But for right now, while I have it on the screen, I want to go over that this is Claude Monet. The title of this piece is Stacks of Wheat, End of Summer. However, um, this artist actually made tons of paintings of stacks of wheat. So if you ever see stacked wheat, chances are that it is a Claude Monet or someone who is inspired by Claude Monet. This is actually paint on canvas, but the artist originally made um, pieces that were sketches, just like we do. And this artist is from France. So you have your picture right down here of the artist. With that, I'm going to go ahead and move us over so that you can see my drawing paper. And then we are going to zoom in so that we can better see our art. Okay, that's not bad right there. Okay, so you will notice, like I said, that we are on page all the way down here in the corner, page number nine. And on page nine, you will notice we are on box 16 because it is day 16. And then we are going to start, remember, we are, we are drawing places. We start with that horizon line or where ground meets sky. There's actually two different ones in this picture. There's the clear one that's at the top of kind of these hills. So I'm going to draw that first. So it's kind of like this. And then it kind of creeps down and then goes back up. And then, ooh, let's let my camera do, do some choices there. There, that's better. Okay, and then there's another one right in here. You can just kind of see it. Some trees are sitting on the top of that edge. So it's a little f further in, and it's a little flatter, kind of like this. Okay, now remember, because the next time we draw, you're going to draw by yourself. So first we drew where the ground meets sky, or those horizon lines. Then we remember that anything in the front is going to be closer to us and lower on our picture plane and anything in the back is going to be higher up and smaller so these two stacks of wheat are an example so i have this first one right here so i'm going to draw it it's kind of wiggly wobbly here on the bottom and then it comes up and then it kind of crosses over top so i'm going to go here and then cross into there and it kind of wiggle wobbles this way and then it wiggle wobbles down. Now remember we did drawing through so I'm not going to worry about those lines. I'm not going to erase them right now. Instead I'm going to whack my camera. Okay so I'm going to go to the wheat that's further behind so it's a little higher on our canvas. The whole thing is a little bit smaller. This Russ keeps not looking at our picture. Okay, now once I have my two wheats, now I'm going to start to draw in all those details. So I'm going to start right here. There's like a separate line, and then I have like trees in here. So I'm going to draw the trees in, and they're barely anything other than like little neat scribbles. Notice that I'm not doing like rah, 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 like this, right? I'm keeping it pretty clean and tight, but yet it's kind of this essence going to feel like an essence of trees, right? I can almost see little teeny tiny stems, but they, and they're kind of these, in these tree blob shapes, they start to get a little bit bigger here. They move a little further down into the picture plane. Go ahead and draw in some of your trees. I got kind of one off into the corner. All right, the next thing I notice is that this is shaded. It's got kind of almost lines in it, like it goes this way. And then these hay pieces almost kind of come across like that. And it's like there's a light space in there. And then there's almost like this shadow that goes sideways. So I'm going to draw that shadow in. I've got some more shadows in here and the more details we add when we're drawing places the more realistic it becomes notice how this blob that looks like nothing I'm gonna go in here and got like loose kind of wheat that's stacked there and some loose wheat here it's like it fell off 
Gonna just, oh, my cat is thinking she needs to be involved in our drawing. I think you just probably heard her. She is not so sure as long as she stays out of the thing. And notice I'm just kind of slowly drawing it. It's like I'm pretending that what I have here is a big stack of wheat or straw. And slowly, some places are darker and some places are lighter. And as I draw and pretend, or just kind of pretend as we draw, it starts to pull it all together, right? And I could even, if I wanted to, shade this in a little darker here. Notice I'm not scribbling. It's more like a light, little clean gesture, okay? And then I'm going to go into the sky, and it's almost like I see nothing in here. It's just these light color fades, isn't it? Real light little color fades. It's kind of all I see is some of that color kind of slowly drops into the space. And then it kind of gets lighter and it's almost nothing right there along the edge. Okay, with that, take a minute for you to go ahead and finish your drawing where we are drawing a landscape where first we start with the horizon lines, then we draw the details. The bigger details are in lower on the picture plane. They have more detail and they're bigger and the things further back are smaller with less detail and then really far back it's even less detail. All right, happy art creating. Oop, I just waved at a screen and you can't even see me. Remember, the next time you come, you are going to be drawing all by yourself without me, and then that way we can take a look at your drawings. Bye!